Grief is very, very hard work. It's more pain than one person can take. You know, I wanted it to be like normal. I didn't know what was normal. Uh, the person died, they ain't coming back. It's not good to just hold back. Talking feelings, that was pretty hard. It's really hard to talk to people if you don't trust them. It's exhausting, it's confusing, you don't feel like yourself. It may look worse before it gets better. Hospice Austin's Camp Braveheart is a camp for kids who have all suffered the death of someone they love. Since all of you can't come to Camp Braveheart, these kids have put together some of their thoughts and feelings and pieces of advice for you. We hope it's helpful. Grief camp may sound really weird, but it's a great place to be. You're with other kids who are all going through what you've gone through. Some of them are acting the same way you're acting. They're feeling the same way you're feeling. You get the opportunity to talk about what's going on in your life if you want to. And you get the opportunity to hear what other kids are going through and how they're coping. And then some ways to deal with all the stuff that's happening in your life. And just at the point where it gets to be too much and you're sick of it, big step, you can right? stop big step. and go jump in the river. When you're grieving, you have to do fun stuff because if you just only sit there and cry a lot, you're going to get really, really tired. You're never going to be able to really get out of bed and just sit in bed all day. I did that a lot. In groups, people realize that, oh, I'm not that different, that other people are, are feeling the same way I am, and, and you have some common experiences. Best things to talk about, or, or be around people that, that live the same thing, like, like this camp. This is a nice camp. Where you can talk about it with a lot of people that were going through the same thing and knew how you felt to some degree, and it was just a place where you could share and know that, you know, you weren't alone and that you weren't dif different. One of the things that may sound so odd is just really believing that someone is dead and that they're not coming back. And then there's the unpacking of all the thoughts and the feelings and the experiences and the ramifications of that accepting the reality of that loss. They're not coming back. It was something that I needed to hear, but I didn't want to hear it. Uh, the person that died, they ain't coming back. You just gotta live with it. You gotta live each day step by step. Well, it helped me come to the realization that my mom was dead and she wasn't gonna be there for me. And it helped me to start to actually cope with it and start to get on with life and learn how to get along in my life without my mom. It took time, I got into counseling, started talking a little bit more, groups and stuff, and then I realized, you know, she's gone, but I, I still gotta move on. A lot of times when we lose someone, we have all these feelings and emotions going on that we don't know if it's okay to have those feelings. We may not completely understand them. And we feel like we're going crazy. Sometimes you can't sleep. You have trouble concentrating. Um, sometimes your appetite changes. So you have all these changes going on and you feel like something's wrong with you, that you're a weirdo, that you're going crazy. But actually that's normal grief. That's a normal reaction to losing someone that you care about. I felt like I was going through a bottomless pit that was never going to end, that my life just kept getting worse and worse. When my mom passed away, I thought it was the end of the world. I, of course, was very depressed and very angry at someone. I didn't know who, but I was very angry and upset with someone. I was just kind of angry, I, but I didn't mean to be. It just kind of came out. When my mom first died, I did become depressed. I. I would go into my room and just sit around and listen to music and I wouldn't come out to talk to anyone and my father and my sisters would try and come in and talk to me but I would just make them leave the room and just leave me alone so I became depressed and 
I just excluded, excluded myself from everyone in the family and everyone around me. Yeah. I would never speak to nobody. I'd just be quiet. And then when it was time to talk about something like that, no, I, I couldn't do it. You don't want to be no other place just besides home, in your room, by yourself. Well, I mean, the emotions are, are very important. And there, there's a tendency to think these are negative emotions. And there is no such thing as a negative emotion from my perspective. You know, it's how you use the emotion. When I lost my dad, I always thought I was weird because I always felt unnormal and stuff like that, but I learned that all of my feelings were normal. We also grieve with our bodies. We get really tired. Sometimes we get headaches, stomach aches. That's all very normal for someone who's grieving, but it's very, very tough. I was very confused. I had like loss of appetite. I was just sick to my stomach. I felt like nobody could tell me what to do. And I had loss of sleep and just a lot of different things. And for a while I was suicidal, but I've, see I've seeked out help for it. The best thing to do is take a risk to be different or to be out of sorts for a while. But in the end, you're going to really feel a lot better. You're really going to be a new person. It's so hard because a lot of these emotions you may have never even felt before. And you wonder, what do I do with all these feelings? It's important to get the feelings out because they weigh on you, they stew around inside of you, and they wind up controlling you. And when you can get them out, your chest feels a little lighter, the, kind of the charge is taken off, it doesn't feel so intense, and they don't have so much power over you. So it doesn't feel good to be angry, it doesn't feel good to be sad, to cry, it doesn't feel good to, to be guilty, but if that's where you are, you really can't get anywhere else until you acknowledge where you are. I think that the most important thing about sharing your feelings and talking about it is that you can't keep it bottled up inside because I thought that I could deal with my grief and my suffering on my own and that I could just handle it with my own mind and tell myself how to cope with it but I can't. It takes so much more than one person to handle this kind of pain. It's more, it's more pain than one person can take. But if you hold it up inside it just becomes a big ball of fire and keeps on adding and adding and adding, soon it's going to get too big and you're just going to explode. It's best to talk because I kept all my feelings bottled up inside of me and one day I just exploded at everyone and the next day no one wanted to talk to me and I couldn't do anything about it because it was my fault since I had kept my feelings bottled up and got mad at them for no reason. So if you feel angry and you want to hit someone, that's not a good way to deal with your anger. But it's okay that you feel angry. So maybe a better way to deal with your anger is to go for a run or to scream into a pillow. So there's other ways that you can, you can still have that, those feelings and not hurt yourself or someone else and get in trouble. When she died, I also, when I get really angry, I just beat the heck out of a pillow instead of taking my anger out on my dad or somebody. You gotta do stuff on the side. You gotta just let it all out. Cause when somebody gets mad, like when I get mad, I like to either punch a punching bag. Sometimes I even like to fight somebody, but that ain't gonna work out. What's the whole point of hurting somebody else? Or just shooting some hoops or playing some football, tackling somebody, just letting it all out. That's the best thing to do. Maybe we want to show that, you know, yeah, somebody died and you're really angry about that or that you maybe feel lost or lonely, but that um, doing something destructive to yourself or to someone else is, is it's not going to help you in the long run. I wish I would have known that um, it was okay to cry because it kept me bottled up for a long time, being uncomfortable crying. 
It's okay to cry in front of people, but you can also cry to yourself when nobody's around. Uh, writing in a journal would work. Just keep writing. You know, don't worry about what you're writing, just keep writing. And you get all your feelings out. It's a good thing to do. That's what I did. I think deep down, all of us know we, we need to get this out of our system. It's going all the way. Man, I'm getting... Stop, tell us to stop. Go all the way, girl. I'm there. Wow. Move it farther. Move it farther. Hi. Clear. Woo! Lots of times. You start to think about all the things that you wish you would have said, or maybe the things that you wish you hadn't have said, or the things that you did, and you start to feel really guilty. You know, one thing that do get to me, I don't really hear it at school, at schools, but I hear it at different places, you know, kids talking about they hate their parents and, and this and that, you know what I'm saying? And I just look at them like, only if you knew. You really don't know the value of them until they're really gone. Then they're gone for life and you can't say what you want to say to them. My dad died in a car accident and he never put a seatbelt on and he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Whenever I got in his truck with him, I always told him to put his seatbelt on. And so I kind of think that was my fault for not being there and telling him to put his seatbelt on. I was a little bad kid. I wasn't that bad, you know what I'm saying? I did things she told me quit doing. I kept doing it over and over. I never did get into any serious trouble that I am now that I got to deal with until she passed. But, you know, I did let her know I loved her before she passed. You know, so I did get to say a couple of things before she went. I just, uh, I wish I would have let her know that I wasn't trying to make it so hard, though. Guilt is a really hard emotion to live with. You can spend a lot of time and energy thinking about all the things that you could have said or that you could have done. And the best way to deal with that is to talk to somebody that you love and trust now. Sometimes we talk about what was it like to go back to school. And that's a situation that a lot of people's classmates don't understand. Well, my first day was it was really uncomfortable. I didn't know what to, how to act, or I thought people expected me to act a certain way. So I wasn't really sure how I was supposed to act. Whenever I went back to school, just the gossiping and the the new news that was out that my mom had just died and that I was a pretty I was a pretty good student and it was very unexpected and some of the children just talking behind my back, you know, just wanting to know the latest news and just gossip mainly. When I got back, there were a lot of rumors. I had told one person, she told everybody else, and they made up rumors. Like she faked her death and she didn't love me and um, a lot of friends just turned against me because of it. Something that really made me mad was when I would tell someone something or how I was feeling that they would go behind my back and tell everyone else and so I would have people sitting there coming up to me and saying something to me that I didn't know what they were talking about because I hadn't been talking to them and so they betrayed my trust and told everyone else and that really bugged me. I dealt with the gossip by just kind of turning away and just kind of understanding that it was natural for other people my age like that to gossip and things like that and I just had to understand that. I guess they would have to go through something like that to know how it felt. They wouldn't be able to understand it so. Some of the things that I wish that adults hadn't done were I wish that they hadn't just said or they didn't necessarily say it but they implied that my mom's death was one thing but my schoolwork or something else was another thing. Like the teachers always kept pressuring me and pressuring me to keep my straight A's or to keep my 
my average that I had and I don't think that they expected it to knock my concentration off balance. When they did ask, you know, tell me I didn't have to finish my homework or anything, I think, well, can it just be like, you know, I wanted it to be like normal. I didn't want them, you know, acting like something, something really bad did happen to me, but like that I couldn't go on. It's like they were telling me, well, I know you're not going to make it, so you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. I wish they would just acted like everything was fine and not worried about it. One of the, I was explaining to one of the, the guys, you know, he said I used to make seven, I mean, uh, 90s in school and now I'm making 70s. And, you know, my mom and my teachers don't understand. He said he wanted me to try to explain that to him, you know. I thought it was kind of like a computer that had a certain amount of memory. Once it gets really close to the memory, what, the computer gets slower, right? It's harder to register. It may crash on you from time to time. It's the same thing. Grief tends to overload the system, if you will, and become a, kind of a predominating energy sapper. Because your, your body, everything's trying to cope with the reality of that loss. It's important to have trust because if you want to share personal stuff, you need to feel like you're safe. You need to be in a safe place to do that. And you need to feel like the people that you're sharing with respect you and are going to keep what you said confidential. It's hard to start to trust someone, especially if you've gone through something that's hard. You don't want to have to deal with people. And, but once you start to find some people that you can trust, it's, it gets easier as time goes on. After my mom died, my friends, they just, they didn't do nothing to make me mad or nothing. They just, they're just taking care of me and spending even more time with me. Sometimes I even felt like they spent too much time with me. That kind of guy, but I understand them, you know, any other person would. And I thank them to this day. They're still there for me. When we lose someone we love, it's like there's a huge hole in our life now. And it's really hard to know what to do with that hole and how to go on with our life with this big piece that's missing. Sometimes I think it, how bad it's going to be not to have my mom at my graduation. And hopefully my dad will be there. But it's kind of hard not having your mom there. I'm just having a birthday party and getting ready for the next one and knowing that you can't have the next birthday party. It really messes you up. She seen my older sister graduate. I was supposed to be the next one. I'm a senior now. You know, knowing that when I graduate, she won't be there. It messes me up, but still, I'm proud to know that I graduated. All my cousins have had their moms for their graduations. And I'll be the only one there without a mom out of my family, so it's kind of rough. I went through Easter. It, it felt like there was a void like something was wrong. I didn't know how to feel, but I, it just felt uncomfortable and like there was something missing. Especially if this is the first time that someone you love has died, it might be hard to believe that this tremendous pain is going to fade, but it really will. If you just trust that there's kind of this internal uh, drive with, within us, it's already in our bodies and our souls and our psyches to heal, to move towards healing, to move towards new life. So it may not, it may look worse before it gets better. When my mom first died, I really thought that everything in my life was going to be over. But my father really helped me through hard times and my sisters were there for me and I had a lot of close friends that really helped me through everything. And in time, everything just started to seem better. I was having better days and having more fun in my life. And even though my mom's still gone and she won't be there for me, I mean, it'll get better and I'll be able to go on without her. It ain't never going to get the best, but 
it, it's gonna get better while the years pass by. I think that the main advice that I would give to someone that's going through this is to not give up hope and that better days are on their way because it's, as time goes on, it does get easier. It, after a while, it may take a while, but no matter how empty and no matter how sad you feel, that just don't give up hope because it will get better. You got goals that you want to do. Keep doing them goals. Don't let that hold you back, even though it's, it's a big loss. But don't let it get to you because stress gets to you fast. Life can get better. You know, all the things that I mentioned can help you get through it in the grieving process. And you can talk to your parents about getting you like in Parents Without Partners or Families in Grief. They were very helpful for me because I had done both of them. And school counselors, they can help you through everything in life. Well, slowly or fast will get better for you. And then you just got to take it step by step. Do what you got to do. Life isn't fair, but make the best out of it. Nobody says that grief is easy. In fact, it's really hard. And everybody grieves in their own ways and at their own pace. You've got to find that pace inside yourself and take good care of yourself right now. Be kind to yourself. Trust that all those feelings that you're feeling are normal and lean on the people that you can lean on.